Today, we are going to talk about the relationship between WAC and the capital asset pricing model, CAPM. When using WAC, the discount rate for equity is usually calculated with the capital asset pricing model, whereas the discount rate of debt is made equal to the market cost of debt. This is inconsistent since equity only carries systematic risk. When you calculate RE, the discount rate on equity, using the capital asset pricing model, of course, you are only including systematic risk in this discount rate. However, when you use the cost of debt, the market cost of debt, as RD, then RD includes both systematic and non-systematic risk. In this video, we will discuss the implications of this uh, point. Recall the full formula for WAC that we explained in a, in a previous video. On the right, we have the traditional WAC formula, D over V multiplied by 1 minus TC by RD plus E over V multiplied by RE. This is a formula well known by all of you. And then on the left side, we have the new version of the WAC formula, which is, perfect, which is perfectly equivalent to the other one, in which WAC is calculated as 1 minus the leverage ratio D over V multiplied by the corporate tax rate. And all of this multiplies the unlevered discount rate after taxes. Whenever the capital asset pricing model is used for discount rate determination, the resulting rates only reflect non-diversified or systematic risk. That is, if we calculate both RE, RD, and also RO using the capital asset pricing model, all of these rates will be consistent with each other because all of them will reflect only systematic risk. Let's focus on RD, which is the, the, the problem part. It's the part that is usually assumed equal to the market cost of debt and is not calculated using the CAPM. Let's define RDM as the market cost of debt, meaning the actual cost of debt, the, 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 the price that we are paying for the debt in terms, in terms of interest. And RDS is the CAPM systematic cost of debt. It's a, uh, it's a discount rate of debt that we would obtain if we apply the capital asset pricing model. The market cost of debt, RDM, equals the risk-free rate plus a default spread. This is the usual way to represent RDM. And as the leverage ratio incre increases, also RDM becomes higher. If we use the CAPM to determine the discount rates in WAC, the right value for the discount rate on debt should be RDS, not RDM, as is usually done. According to the CAPM, if the debt is not affected by systematic risk, the discount rate on debt, in this case RDS, would remain constant and equal to the risk-free rate RF for every leverage ratio. This is assuming that as we increase the leverage ratio, systematic risk of the debt remains in zero. Beta is equal to zero. However, it is perfectly possible that as we increase leverage, the systematic risk of debt remains in zero, but the market cost of debt increases because the probability of default increases. So there will be a substantial difference between RDM and RDS as a leverage rises. RDS, the systematic, systematic measure of the cost of debt, might be larger than RF and variable only to the extent that the systematic risk of the debt is affected by leverage, which often happens. Let's illustrate first with this case. Case one, let's assume that the bond issued by the, the, the company, uh, the bond uh, has zero systematic risk. The risk is only unsystematic. And to make it simple, we are going to assume a zero coupon bond that matures in one year, face value 1,000, and the risk rate equals 5%. 
And the bond, if the bond is risk-free, the price of the bond will be given by this very simple expression. It's 1,000, face value one year from now, divided by one plus the discount rate, which is the risk-free rate, because the beta of the bond is zero. So the market price of the bond should be equal to 952.38. Now let's assume that there is a 20% probability of the fall. In that case, the numerator is no longer 1,000, but will have to be the expected cash flow at maturity. And this expected cash flow is equal to 0 0.8, the probability of full payment, multiplied by 1,000, the face value, plus 0 0.2, the probability of the fall, multiplied by 0, the amount that I get in case of the fall. And given that, system, that systematic risk remains in 0, with we discount at 5% rate, and we obtain now a new price for the bond, which is 76191. The discount rate remains the same. The only thing that changed was the expected cash flow at the end of one year. And given that when we have a 20% probability of the fault, the expected cash flow goes down, then of course the price of the bond at time zero will go down as well. We can define then promise promise return as the full 1,000 divided by the market value of the bond, which is 76191 minus 1, and then we obtain 31.25%. This is what is known as the promised return of the bond. This is the return that a holder of the bond will get in case he buys the bond for, six, for 76191 and the bond is paid in full at the end of one year. Of course, the probability of getting this 31.25% return is just 80%. We can also define the expected return. The expected return is in, in the denominator, we have the expected cash flow, and in the denominator, the market price of the bond. And we get 5%, which is the discount rate. So you see that in the first, in the first case, the promised return corresponds to RDM, whereas the expected return corresponds to RDS. We can also do the problem assuming that the bond has some systematic risk. We assume that the beta of the bond is 20, 0.2. So here we apply the capital asset pricing model to estimate the discount rate, and the discount rate is 6.6%. The expected cash flow remains the same. We have exactly the same uh, probability of default of 20%, but now we discount at the new rate that includes some systematic risk, and we obtain the price, which is somewhat lower than the one, one we obtained before, the price of 750.47. So promised return in this case will be 1,000, full payment divided by the market value of the bond, minus one, gives us 33.25%. This will be the promised return, the return that the holder of the bond will get in case he is paid in full. And this corresponds also to our RDM, the market return of the bond. And the expected return, RDS, then will be just 6.6%, which is the discount rate that we calculated, that we calculated using the capital asset pricing model. Both promised and expected returns increased. Notice that these increases are due exclusively to a larger systematic risk, since the probability of default remains the same for both bonds. RDM corresponds to the internal rate of return, also called yield to maturity, on promised cash flows. And as you noticed in the previous example, is affected by both the discount rate and the probability of the fall that affects the expected cash flow. According to the CAPEN, the discount rate on debt should be RDS and not RDM, as is often the case. Only when promised and expected cash flows are equal, meaning that the probability of the fall is zero, then RDM and RDS will be the same. Let's finish with the last example. 
we will work out uh, a bond that was issued by Petrobras, the Brazilian firm, many years, uh, some years back. This issue was uh, this issue was uh, issued in uh, September 11, 2003. Maturity was in 2013. The coupon was 9.125. And uh, the coupons were paid tw uh, twice a year, in January 2 and July 2. Now we know that at this date, December 2, 2004, the market price of the bond was uh, 116, 0.33. And if we calculate the yield, so the, the, the return assuming that, the promise return, the return assuming that we are paid in full, the yield, which also corresponds to our RDM, the yield is 7.191%. Now let's apply the, capi the capital asset pricing model to this bond. We assume a market risk premium of 4.5%, a risk-free rate of 4.25%, a beta for the bond of only 0 0.054, and an expected return, RDS, calculated through the CAPM, that now is 4.49% which is quite different from the yield RDM of 7.191%. For this expected return, 4.49%, the discounted cash flows, if we discount promised cash flows using the CAPM rate, the present value of the bond would be 141.53. This value contrasts with a much lower market price of 116. So there is an 18% reduction in value. And this is simply due to the expected default risk, the probability of default of this bond. So let's summarize the conclusions. RE and RO are generally computed using the capital asset pricing model. However, the discount rate of debt is usually made equal to the market cost of debt, RDM. This is because practitioners usually regard RDM as a practical way to account for bankruptcy costs by incorporating the default spread somehow in the discount rate. However, bankruptcy costs, remember, are actually a, ca a cash flow effect. So a bankruptcy costs affect the expected cash flows of the firm, shouldn't affect the discount rate. Well, when you include the probability of default or default risk in RD, in the discount rate of debt, and, and, and put it into the work. Actually, what you are doing is that you are quantifying this bankruptcy cost, a cash flow effect, by changing the discount rate. An important inconsistency is found. RE and RO only account for systematic risk, whereas the discount rate of debt, RDM, carries a component of unsystematic risk. So, we conclude by saying that we must differentiate between the practical WAC and the formal Miller-Modigliani WAC that would make the discount rate of debt equal to RDS if you want to make it consistent with the capital asset pricing model. And that's all I wanted to share with you today.